Everybody, we're here joined by, by John Sanchez, MRV intern at Lower Carbon Capital. That's true. I might be the only MRV intern out there. <laughs> Carbon Removal Academy creator, which is the, the, the curriculum core of, of Airmark Food Up. Uh, any other tags you have? No, that's pretty good. Okay. Sweet. Well, glad you're here, John. Uh, last week, I had sent out this message about purchasing a first ton from a startup. And it was this idea of, you know, buying like ton number one from a startup company. And, and I had bought two of these tons. Uh, and, and I said, hey, does anybody else want to buy a ton? And you, you kind of took that and, and ran with it, <laughs> you and your, your running abilities. Sure. What, um, and I want to talk all about that. And so in the next 10 minutes, we're going to kind of talk about it, what it means and all that sort of stuff. But just to kick us off, can you can you talk about like the case for like the regular carbon rule purchases? Like the you know we're Stripe, we're Microsoft, we're Shopify. Like why? Did, what's what's the case for for like real purchases of carbon removal? Yeah, well, I mean, Frontier is like especially comparing something like Frontier to something like what we're doing and buying a first ton. Like you know, the ultimate goal is obviously to like you know help get these companies you know, a first customer such that someone's actually buying their tons and they're forced to deliver a product and figure out all of the infrastructure that goes with that in terms of MRV and in terms of, you know, how you deal with the project financing and deployment and learning curves and that their actual technology process. Like once you have a buyer, all of that all of a sudden becomes real. Um, and the earlier you are in sort of being a first customer or something like that, the more you sort of get to set the tone there and like allow companies to set this up for the first time and sort of help them co-create that as the buyer of that product. Um, but the difference with what we're doing obviously is that, you know, Frontier's got a huge pool of money and takes it very seriously and has a lot of infrastructure put together and is very you know, built out for this and is continuing to build out that know-how. Whereas I feel like we're just showing up for one ton as the first buyer and being like, hey, let's try this out. Let's take even more pressure off and just see what happens. Um, you know, trying to build out a pre-purchase process and see what happens when we make it real for a really early stage carbon removal company. Neat. So it's kind of this different, it's this obviously different level of scale of seriousness of dollars. Um, I'm curious, we had talked a little bit about this over Slack, but like you kind of caught on to this, it seemed like, and you were like, wow, this could really be, this could really be something, this, this like <laughs> one ton purchase. So like, what, how are you thinking about that now? It's not, so you, you've, you've bought one ton or you're like, you're sort of in the process of buying this first ton, the first yeah. ton from a startup, but like what, yeah. What do you, what do you think's in here? Like what, what do you, what are you doing this for? Yeah, I mean, there's a few things. I mean, obviously, there's just like the being silly and playing around and having the flex of having bought a first ton, which is funny. Um, and like, you know, that company gets to gigaton scale and you can always be number 00000001. <laughs> oh, um, nice. Which is really fun. Oh, um, cool. But from my standpoint, I'm also really interested in like this forward financing concept and like, you know, carbon removal projects that, you know, won't really be able to produce tons for two years, but need upfront financing now. Like, you know, there's got to be some pathway for them to get started and get to market faster. And even though there's a ton of risk involved and like this whole process is figuring out who holds which risks and how do you mitigate that and how do buyer or how, how do buyers stay up to date on progress and make sure that you know the carbon removal company isn't taking the money and running and you know what does the process for mrv look like for proving after the fact that this thing happened and isn't just like sort of a loose promise um so I, there are a lot of conceptual frameworks to sort of align behind here and i think just by being a first time buyer for me it's just kind of fun to like like I was saying before, like help co-develop that process a little bit, help think more about like, I feel like sometimes I'm in a little bit of like theory land of like, all right, well, this is what this will look like in the abstract when the industry is built out and when 
forward financing and pre-purchasing is really scaled up. But it's kind of cool to be actually in the process of being a buyer without having that giant committed pool of money like Frontier does and still like, you know, being able to noodle about how it works in practice and the implementation details. Yeah, it sounds like part of the benefit is just as from the buyer perspective is like kind of being there on the on the ground. You mentioned the flex of zero 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 one zero an additional zero one. It just sounds cool. Yeah, um, maybe. You know, so I haven't told you this, but uh, eleven people respond to the messages that I sent out uh, about buying a first ton. So like, there was a lot of interest in this buying a first ton, and I was kind of curious. So I wrote back a bunch of people, and I was like what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, why? You, what's important to you about buying one ton of carbon, right? Like our, our, our annual footprints are much, much bigger. Um, like it's one trillionth of the excess carbon in the air. Like, isn't this just some tiny little thing? What is, what is it that you want to, like what's valuable to you about this? Um, and so similar to what you said, like you mentioned, you mentioned the flex, you mentioned kind of co-creating, being, being there. Um, somebody mentioned, uh, let's see it's it's, it's really personal uh they're they're yep. subscribing to some other kind of carbon rule general purchases but there's something about this like first buyer uh because you're you can be more of a supporter you're rooting for the team there's really this much yeah you're on the personal. team you're on the team that's me on the team Somewhat, yeah um, somebody else said they they were a carbon trader and they were just fascinated by how you can buy just one ton so I thought that was neat, but doesn't necessarily yeah. tie to like just buying one ton. Somebody else said a snowball starts with a single snowflake. I want to be that for someone. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, yeah. it's it's a it's a once a startup has a first customer, it gives them boost and focus to keep going. So yeah, overall, it, he, definitely hearing you know this like I want to be part of this story. It's kind of a flex right. to talk about you know, that the, I got this one ton, it's not a lot of money. I mean, like what were, when, when you've talked uh, about buying a ton of carbon, how much have you been up for, for paying? I think I got $333 on the line. So not the, like, in the scheme of things, not that much, especially for like early stage direct air capture type thing. What do you mean? Somebody's not going to quit their job and with 333 <laughs> of your big bucks. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the big so, investment dollars are coming in. Yes, the big, big money. Um, so, okay, so that's kind of what happened and, and kind of what it, what it might mean. So an, a, a, another side of it is, I mentioned I had 11 of these people that, that wrote back and I think most of them, at least, at least seven, there's sort of some others that come in, but at least seven of them said, yes, I want to pay $250 for a ton of carbon. The cool. interesting thing is, so I, I wrote the Launchpad teams and they said, hey, who, who wants to sell a ton of carbon? And the response was actually quite mixed. I was surprised. Uh, one team, it sounds like, is potentially talking with you. But everybody else had a lot of questions about, you know, is this, is this the right thing for us to be doing? What does it mean to kind of take on this responsibility? What is, yeah. you know, it, it's, uh, it's definitely much more serious for the startups. It's, it's not a flex, right? This is their, this is their business you're toying with. <laughs> Right. So like walking around. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have, so, so you've talked with uh, one of these uh, sellers. What was that conversation like? What do you think? What's valuable for them about this? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, part of it is, you know, getting it's a very like slow ramp up in terms of selling tons, I think, in terms of doing it responsibly. Like you don't want to just dump 10,000 pre-purchased tons on the market. And it's a much more. Uh, like, you know, start with the first one and then the first 10 and then the first hundred to really make sure you're getting the process right. Um, but so, so I think it's valuable to sort of just like have a first initial test case without really dumping everything out there all at once. But you're right that it's, it's a lot of responsibility to take on. And I think without like a industry standard process for making this work, like, you know, if, if, while figuring this out for yourself, like, you know, getting it wrong in a public way with a public facing buyer or something like that, mm. I think adds a lot of pressure. And like, you don't want to like, d does signing away a ton or sell selling it away mean that you have to have all of your MRV shit together? Do you have to like have figured out all the details of your process and like know exactly what you're promising? Or is it okay to be sort of loose and hand wavy with a lot of it and be like, you know what, we'll take money now and figure out the details later and we'll let you know when we have it. 
Like, I think that's a little bit of a scary proposition, maybe for some buyers, but also I imagine for like the company themselves that's selling it. Um, because like we were saying, like, ha I think having sold a product means it's real for you now and you have to know what the thing is. So, yeah, that's a pretty scary proposition. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if, so, so you got a ton and I got some tons, but this nice. offer of like, hey, do you want to sell tons to some randos? like, or some strangers didn't, didn't click. I wonder if I'm, it's almost a little bit like there's a flex from the other direction too. Like we get to say, Hey, John Sanchez is our zero, 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 zero. Keep going. Zero one. <laughs> yeah. Boom. <laughs> right. Like there's, do you think there's anything like what's for the, for the buyer that yeah. you're talking about? Like, do they, do they know you or are you just, are you anonymous or? Um, I'm not anonymous <laughs> and I, I don't think it's like they're specifically targeting me in this case, yeah. as like a specific buyer, but I think, uh, specifically actually when I was talking to them, they said they didn't want you Tito to be uh -huh. their first buyer because cool. it's an air miners launch pad team. Uh -huh. And, uh, like having you as a buyer, isn't as much of like a signal of market validation since you're already like in there with the team yeah whereas me is just someone on the outside looking in um, Yeah, that's interesting that, that that seemed to be a point but i think for sure there's there's something about like getting the right person to to craft as the initial buyer and framing that as some sort of marketing narrative yeah there's something here where it's like it's almost like you're paying them to do customer discovery right like it's like it, it's almost like I imagine in a different world, somebody said, "Hey, we're looking. We're gonna. We're looking to interview somebody about their carbon needs as an individual, and we're gonna give you. We're gonna pay you a ton of carbon for it. But also, you have to pay us money. It's like sort of like a mini yeah. consulting thing, sort of. Um, yeah, this is this is quite interesting. Any um, so we, so we talked about what happened. We talked about kind of what it might mean. Uh, any yeah. other kind of final thoughts to add, or anything else that's that's interesting?" about this yeah well so i'm i'm super interested in the risk part of it and like the what happened like you know for my one ton i'm not super concerned about like you know what happens if there's no delivery and the company goes under but like i think it's interesting to think about what this pre-purchase process looks like at scale if it gets there um even if it's not this like silly one ton like flex on both ends type thing and scales up a little further like i think you know, me or you posting on Airminer Slack, the photo of like $400 being venmo to some company, like there's no, it's, there's no rules there at all. And so like, ultimately you as the buyer or me as the buyer are holding the risk. Um, uh, and like, you know, what if we're not satisfied with the MRV results or the data that we get at the end that sort of shows it like, we don't have any recourse. We don't have any way of, like that's not priced in somehow. There's no insurance. Yep. Like we're just holding the bag and we're okay with that because we're in it for the team and we trust their good intentions and we are really rooting for them and want to be there. But yeah, I mean, it's not a sure thing and that company can go under, that company could do it wrong. That company could ultimately be fraudulent. Like um, again, not these specific companies, but just like more broadly speaking about how this could work. So like, it's interesting to think about what the mechanisms will look like going forward to either do some sort of insurance risk transfer or somehow like be really explicit about what those risks are and like make sure buyers are aware of them. Um, especially again, if it, you're buying, uh, you know, 10,000, a hundred thousand tons instead of just one. Yeah, totally. Um, definitely seems like a, a curious experiment that around kind of some, some different elements than these kind of thousand ton purchases. Um, yeah, we'll have to see where this, where this develops from here. Maybe this is just a silly experiment and buying, buying single tons of carbon makes, makes no sense. Uh, no, I think it's great. Hopefully it's interesting. I mean, you get it to work. It's a lot of fun. You can like, I just, I don't know. I like, I like, like the voluntary market right now is seems like, largely like a company driven thing and i think it'll stay that way but i like i think you framed it at one point as like small experiments you can do with small dollar amounts like on a personal level 
that make a difference and, you know, are, are catalytic in some way. And even if there's risk or it's fraud a little bit, like, I, I like feeling like there's a little bit of personal agency there beyond just like big pools of money, like frontier that have sort of top-down power. Yeah, totally. That, that whole $500 experiment concept comes from, uh, Sarah and Mark from the determined oh. and climate designers who, uh, they advocate for that. Like basically pick a number. $500, maybe it's a hundred dollars, but like some amount of money you are comfortable just like burning up on something and, and figure out like, yeah, like <laughs> let's, let's turn that into an experiment. Uh, maybe for some people it's $50 okay. or $5, but just like try something and see what happens. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate you and everybody else who responded and people who had questions and comments and confusion about why would somebody buy these? Um, yeah, appreciate everybody coming along for the ride on this. Uh, curious to see where it where it goes, uh, and and we'll see if there's another update in the future. Uh, but there does seem, and the math is interesting, right? The math is well, if if you bought a ton for three hundred thirty three tons, and if you had nine hundred ninety nine other people, you do start to get like frontier scale, you know, half a million dollar, million dollar pre purchase, and it's like again, it's it's no. to a to a market that's maybe unsophisticated, you could say, maybe it's like, you know, John's unsophisticated and, and, and these people are buying something they don't understand or they're, you know, but, but there's something there that's, that's, that's pure and, and curious. And I mean, the whole flex thing to me as a takeaway is like, so interesting, right? Cause it's, that's what corporations are doing, right? Like, isn't that kind of part of this whole carbon thing It's like a big part of it is the flex. What if we could admit like, yeah, you know what? $500 to be like, I've got this cool carbon flex is like kind of cool. And if we could get, you know, a thousand people who wanted that together, then you've got, yeah. you know, you've got to purchase. There's, there's something interesting there that we'll see how this all sorts. Yeah. Out. I think another part of it maybe also is like, you know, if I have two choices, I can spend my $333 on a ton from this sort of new emerging uncertain company that hasn't you know validated their their technology yet and is still working through a lot of risk like i could spend it on them or i could spend it on like a well-established like a climbworks ton or something like that that you know i'm pretty certain will will be delivered like you know the difference is just like if, if i'm only in the offsetting game i'm just gonna buy from climbworks but there's something about taking on that risk for the you know, the benefit of helping a company scale up and like almost as though the earlier tons of the earliest tons are the most catalytic. And as you go, like there's some like impact learning curve decrease where you don't have as much of a difference there on an individual basis. So I kind of like the, the thinking of like trading off risk for impact or something like that. Yeah, totally. That's something that I, I haven't heard so much in the carbon removal industry yet, that seems like a thing, which is, you know, how do you compare a catalytic dollar versus a, a like straight removal dollar where it's just like, boom, they actually remove the carbon compared to like an yeah, right. dollar or something else, right? Like how do these, how do you think about the impact of these things? And clearly with air miners, we're at the like, you know, the, those small early impacts. Um, yeah. And thinking about those and kind of how they fit in, where should we be spending, you know, 1% on the catalytic dollars, 10%, 50%, 100%, um, right. 200%. And how do you evaluate the extent to which, you know, that risk gets mitigated over time or like, you know, is it the same? Like if, if all tons are fungible and commodified, or if all tons are fungible and commodified, then like, you know, in principle, there's no difference. And like, there's no reason for anybody to take on that extra risk. So part of it is like, you know, I guess other than the flex or the desire for impact, like, you know, are there mechanisms to put in place to make those riskier, but more catalytic tons more desirable or something like that in the market? Um, like getting paid or something to take on that risk or getting some extra credit bonus shiny star or something like that for 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 that risk or something like that um but yeah i don't know it's it's interesting to think about good well thanks for taking the time to to talk through this i've i've dropped all the legos that i fiddle with while i was talking to you so i think this conversation's nice. over <laughs> put them back together
<laughs> so yeah, any any uh any other other thoughts? Uh, Mark and Sarah, welcome to welcome to weigh in. Um, yeah, curious about curious about this. You know, this whole first tons thing was couched in what other experiments can air miners do? And so I'm super curious for anybody else to come up with a five hundred dollar experiment. Maybe a maybe a five hundred dollar experiment is you fly out and remove your carbon to meet a you know to meet a company in the field or to what else can you do with five hundred bucks in the carbon removal experimental world? Uh, maybe it's a first time. Maybe there's ten other experiments that people can do with with their five hundred dollars. So we'd love to love to see more of those happening. And uh, yeah, as always, John, really appreciate uh, talking through stuff with you, trying stuff out, uh, and uh, to to this experiment and and the future ones. Yeah, no, I'm sure we should we should put that to the air miners community. I bet people have a lot of ideas about how to be. I don't know, catalytic in terms of uh, R&D or something without promising tons, but like maybe promising some result that comes back or like buy some piece or components or like lab infrastructure or something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's interesting. Like, like, would I pay $500 to say, I'm going to sign up for your newsletter for the next 12 months and I expect like 12 updates and I'm willing to pay $500 I, for that. Like, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, yeah, so pay, let's see. Pay someone, do. pay someone five hundred dollars to like summarize a bunch of uh, like emerging papers about like ocean alkalinity or something, and totally the, yes, put up like a little bounty and say like, hey, I'm looking exactly, for a report yeah. on this topic that I don't know anything about. Um, maybe it's for curiosity. Maybe it's because you want to take a job at a company, or maybe it's right. Like, there's just so much kind of latent knowledge and interest and curiosity that coming in with little chunks of dollars could be right. just a neat way to like kind of experiment and say hey I, I think there's a price on this cool very interesting good thank you john always good chatting <laughs>